Let's get to a senior economics reporter Steve Leisman. Uh, he joins us now with more on rates. Steve. Hey, good morning, Andrew. Yeah, yesterday's big rise in rates in the wake of that stronger than expected jolts or job openings report was a reminder that along with more debt, strong economic growth is a big part of the reason for these higher rates we have. And the message it's sending to the Fed and to the markets is that the neutral rate, that's the one that neither slows nor accelerates the economy, is higher. And that's a long term conclusion, one that may not go away very quickly. Let's take a look at what the Fed's policy has been and what the economic results have been. The Fed raised rates by 500 basis points. We're now around 5.3 percent. The balance sheet has actually declined from its peak by nearly a trillion dollars, just under eight trillion dollars right now. What are the results? Just one tick down in the unemployment rate. You still have uh, you, the economy is 2.3 percent larger for a 2.1 percent GDP run. And the CPI has fallen sharply to down down four and a half percent. The message to the Fed, the economy is a lot more resilient than I thought and rates can be at this level with inflation coming down and growth and employment still health healthy. I talked to former uh, PIMCO economist Paul McCulley yesterday. He says the bond market is mispriced for the strength of the economy, that the economy is so strong while rates are so high is telling the market and the Fed that the neutral rate is higher. Powell even suggested that could be the case at the press conference last month. Meanwhile, the idea of higher rates long term, which means fewer near term cuts, met a market that had baked in substantial rate cuts next year. So the only way for the markets to adjust to this new reality, price rate cuts out of the short end and drive the long run higher. And Andrew, we had Andrew, uh, uh, Rafael Bostic yesterday from the Atlanta Fed saying, hey, we were sufficiently restricted, which means we don't have to raise rates more. But then he went on to say he doesn't see he sees the next Fed move as only a single rate cut next year at the end of the year. What about you? Where are you, Steve Leisman? Well, I, I'm, I'm start, start trying to process this idea of a higher long term rate. I think ultimately that leads to at least one good development. If and when we can get inflation under control, the Fed can start to ease back on the short end. Um, I think Bostic may be a little pessimistic about the ability of the Fed to cut rates next year. If we do get inflation under control, a lot depends on what happens with oil and how that works through the economy right now. But you can imagine a situation where the funds rate comes down maybe somewhere below five and you get at least a flat or a slightly invert, a slightly uninverted or disinverted or upward sloping yield curve, that would be a positive development. I, I just think the Fed is talking a little tougher now than they feel. In fact, yesterday, one of the things I was trying to report, uh, Andrew, mm -hmm. is if you look at the dot plot, there's a bunch of folks down at four and a quarter, four and a half for next year. None of those folks have been talking, or if they have been talking, they might have changed their mind from September. So there are a few doves out there. They're just a little bit hard to find right now. I'm putting them back. The cuts are back on the table. Yeah, I'm, I'm convinced. I don't that, know. I'm convinced this, uh, next year. I'm convinced the steak is totally well done that we've talked about, the filet. You put it under the, you put it under the tin foil. It was pink when we did it, and we definitely it was heated up way too much, and, and now it's like a, an old shoe. It's already overcooked. We're already too tight. That's what I'm starting to think. This could get this could get out of hand, Steve. If these rates are unmoored, which is what we what some people are saying right now, they're not moored to what the Fed's doing Joe, anymore. The, the the discussions I've had with with Fed officials suggest that they're not overly worried about the financial system right now. Of course, no, I don't famous mean that. last words. Right. I, I mean, something but, could but break. But that's I one way you that. get I'm just thinking about mortgage. I'm just thinking about mortgage rates. I'm thinking just about right. that we could get, it could be much, the economy could uh, could roll over much more quickly and, and worse than, than they had thought previously. And we haven't seen it yet. One of these days, we're going to get a data point that starts indicating that. So what do you do with that, Joe? I mean, it sounds like one thing in the bond market you would do with that is you would go very long the short end because you'd be playing those cuts that are now being you mean an out. investor or, the or the fed what what does an investor do as or what does investor, the fed do as an investor oh. as it as an investor you, you you would certainly go go long the short end on that call right and maybe even a little bit of the long the the, the uh the long end you might have more more return there 
I just think we're ripe for a policy mistake on the other side of this. We, we, we had one going in, and, and we might be ripe for one. Now, we, we're going back from the soft landing, Steve. That, that's suddenly what we are, 80 percent uh, consensus on that. What, where are we now, do you think? No, we were, we were, we were, we were 40 percent on that and, 40, and, and a lower percentage on recession. I think what you're saying is funny because I, I, I kind of remember that, that it seemed like we were only reporting the idea that a soft landing had become the conventional wisdom until all of a sudden, like in a, in a week or two, it wasn't the conventional wisdom. All of a sudden, people started worrying about what all changed? of the effects of these higher rates. And, and what did you say back? What changed? Because I, I, I couldn't pinpoint it. I, what happened, these higher rates are creating a lot of concern right now in how they're affecting both consumers and businesses. Um, one thing we have seen for a while there, the spreads between corporate, tr corporate bonds and treasuries were actually narrow. They seem to be widening it out again. Really? Uh, there's yeah. stories about delinquencies out there. The yeah. things Joe was really just talking about, Becky, is the, the effects of these higher rates on the economy. Of course, what I just reported, this idea that the neutral rate is higher, is sort of saying that the economy can withstand this, the, the, the difficult adjustments notwithstanding. 